this tutorial, I'm going to go further into Twixter Pro's advanced tools, specifically the usage of Twixter Pro to create a synthetic camera move by interpolating between views to create smooth movement between different cameras. We will also separate our foreground from the background using a rendered mat to get better results, and I'll show you how to use splines to get rid of a bit of extra wobbling in the sequence. In addition, we will utilize some of the powerful features of Rematch Pro to get rid of artifacts from a frame and match overall color. You should be familiar with the settings of the regular version of Twixter before watching this tutorial, because I won't be covering the basic Twixter concepts here. You can refer to the regular Twixter tutorials for more information on the basics. You should also watch the Twixter Pro Advanced Tools masks and splines tutorial to get the basics on masks and splines. We're going to start by looking at the footage that we're planning to use for this tutorial. You can see that we're actually using four still frames representing four different camera views and we will use Twixter Pro to turn them into a 50 frame sequence. Sometimes you need to stabilize the views before interpolating them. We will see that in a different tutorial as it can get a bit more complicated. In this case, we have water spots on the last frame. We can use Rematch Stereo to remove them as well as match the color from frame to frame. We're going to go ahead and start with getting rid of those spots and matching the color. You can refer to the Introduction to Rematch Stereo tutorial to learn the basics. Since Rematch Stereo is used sometimes for stereo footage to match one view of video or film to another, don't think you can't use it to do a simple fix like this. You can easily match this last frame with the spots to the frame before without the spots just by using a good frame as a reference. I've made a new project and added each of the four frames, but right now they're stacked up on top of each other and we need them to be in a sequence along the timeline. We can select them and go to Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Sequence Layers. Note, the frames should be in the proper order because they'll spread from top to bottom across the timeline. Now the four frames should be 1 to 4 along the timeline. We can take this sequence and make a new sequence. So now we have a single layer of four frames. Now we need a reference frame for rematch to use, which will be a good frame with the color we want without any artifacts. We can use frame 3 as our reference frame, so we drag that to our comp and we'll extend the length to the end of our sequence, which is 4 frames. Ok, now let's fix that water smear by adding Rematch Stereo to our sequence. We select the reference frame layer as our Match to reference. We'll turn Global Match to Gain plus Offset to just match the color overall to our reference frame. Now we will use local match to get rid of the water smears on frame 4. We're going to animate this mode to off for the first three frames that we don't need to use it, and then set to more detailed refined mismatched areas for the frame with the smears. We can make a map for the water smears by using the drawing tools in After Effects to draw a closed shape. Now I can add another shape for the other smear and turn off the visibility of the shapes. We will pre-compose our shape layer by selecting the layer and going to the layer menu and select pre-compose. We can check the box for use exclusion mat and choose the shape layer that we just made. We also choose the exclusion channel and I'm picking red although it would be okay to choose red, green, or blue since I drew this shape as an RGB shape. We're also going to turn the mismatch threshold up a bit so it takes in a few more of the pixels that aren't matching. If we turn on and off rematch, you can see the changes that have been made. Now we make this comp 50 frames because this is the length that we want our Twixtered clip to be. We make a new comp from this comp that we've corrected the smear on and the overall color. 
It's time to add Twixter Pro and retime our four different camera moves to create our virtual camera move sequence. We can first see what happens if we just retime the sequence without using a mat to separate the foreground from the background. We adjust the frame rate to 23.976 because that's what our project is set to, and these two numbers need to match unless you're doing a frame rate conversion. We're going to change the speed percentage to 6%. And for now, we'll leave the other settings at their default and do a RAM preview. You can see that our virtual camera move is looking pretty good, but we can make it even better with a few more of our advanced tools. Let's start with adding a mat to separate the foreground plane from the background. I made this mat in Mocha, but you can use the drawing tools in After Effects or any other software you're comfortable with to make your mat and import the, to the project. You could also import the shapes from Mocha instead of rendering the mat, but we'll see that in another tutorial. You'll want to go to Interpret Footage to make sure the mat is the same frame rate as your comp. And if it isn't, make sure to go to Interpret Footage, Main, and conform to the same frame rate as your comp. Now we'll add the mat to our comp and make sure our display is set to Source to show the source footage. We can change the mode to Add so we can see our mat over our comp to check the mat. Now that we see that it's good, we can turn off the visibility. We can look at the Twixter settings. We go to FG1 settings and set the mat to select the mat we just added. We use the red channel because it's an RGB file, so you could use any of the three channels, but not the alpha channel in this case. Now we just turn the display back to Twixter to output. If we do a RAM preview, you can see that there are a few places that are a little bit wobbly still. So this is where some splines might also help. I can just use the pen tool to draw a few splines in the background. I'll put the display on source and make sure I'm on frame one. I can set a keyframe and add another keyframe in the middle and maybe another one on the last frame and then one more to put it off screen. Now we continue on the background splines and when I have those finished I can go to the main BG settings and select the first mask and the last mask so Twixter will use all the splines between the first and the last masks to get a better idea of what's happening on the foreground layer from frame to frame. Now we go select Twixter to output again for the display and do another RAM preview. Now we can see that Twixter has interpolated new frames between each of the camera views and we have a pretty clean virtual camera move. This is how we can use the advanced tools in Twixter Pro and Rematch to get great results.